Hey guys, what's up? So today I have a very long video for you. Um, so to briefly summarize the video, I think dungeon leveling is the strongest way to get from 1 to 60 in the fastest time with the least amount of hiccups and in an environment that you control and you know what to expect. That being said, I think the first level 60 could still be someone that's questing and I still think that a questing route offers probably the most benefit for an average player. Now, here is a little bit of a disclaimer. One of the most important things with dungeon leveling uh, that I've kind of found over the practice that I've done and kind of looking at the community as a whole, um, one thing is when someone says dungeon leveling is you know, strong or it's optimal or it's uh, a good way of leveling, what you need to realize is there's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, one of the biggest factors is your group composition. Group composition matters uh, quite a lot. So as you can see, my group is getting roughly 20k XP an hour. We have three warriors, a shaman, and myself tanking. Now, another group that I saw recently doing the same exact run was Cargos had a group, and he had, I think, two rogues, uh two warriors and a shaman, I believe it was, and they were getting significantly less. When I say significantly, they were getting between 17K and 18K, I think, an hour, which obviously that adds up over time. Uh, what I mean by this is every single person in your group needs to really, really uh, understand their role um, and be able to adapt quickly and also pump out as much DPS as you can do. There's special things that you can do within these runs to make a run go much smoother. One thing is having things like sharpening stones. We don't have any of them here, but that's an option is sharpening stones, uh, any kind of potions that you can get early on, having the right group composition, making sure you know what rewards and items that uh, people in your group need to be looking out for. For example, all of our warriors have the Axe of Ogremar, which is from a quest reward from this dungeon and it adds a lot of DPS for our warriors. And then also we know that once we go into Wailing Caverns that we'll be needing to get the Crescent Staff for all our warriors as well, a huge DPS upgrade. So, like I said, dungeon leveling can be extremely fast. However, if you don't have the right group composition, if people don't know their role and they don't know how to maximize their DPS, and you have people that you haven't played much with or tested leveling, like a leveling dungeon route much with, you're going to probably run into issues. So for the average player who is just, you know, going to enjoy launch, I would really suggest just having a good leveling path and playing it out that way. That way you don't have to worry about other players. Now, if you know these players you're going to be playing with and say you're all in a guild or you've practiced before, then I think dungeon leveling is a really good option. But unless you you know know these players well, have played with them before and practiced, I think that it's going to lead to more of a headache than actual fast leveling. Um, one thing you have to understand with leveling with a group is with if you have one weak link, that, that can br bring you all the way to your knees. Uh, if you have someone that goes to bed after a few hours or wants to take a break or something like that, um, that right there is going to stop your leveling process right there. And it's very hard to just go back out in the world and kind of catch back up. Um, and that being said is because a lot of these uh, quests that you have while you're leveling up are either chain quests or you need to have started them in one zone and they'll, you know, move you over to another zone. So just, you know, being thrust back out into the world can be kind of challenging to kind of get, uh, pick up uh, the pace and kind of start back up. So... I hope that explains kind of my feelings on uh, dungeon leveling and why I don't think it's a really good fit for everyone. But now that we've covered that, I'm going to go into the b more of the details on dungeon leveling and kind of give you a lot of the uh, numbers and facts that you guys probably want to hear. All right, guys, one of the most important things that we need to cover is the group composition. So the group that I'm running with is one druid, one shaman, and three warriors. So we actually have a very good reason why this comp we believe to be the best. Uh, Shaman provides Wind Fury Totem. Druid provides a great tank that is very gear independent. 
holds threat very well with AoE and can still provide fairly good DPS. As a bear druid, you're going to do more DPS than a prop warrior would. And you're also a different gear type, so you're able to soak up that agility, leather gear, you know, things like that. Now, our group composition relies heavily off of cleave damage. That's why a lot of people refer to them as um, melee cleave. Now, obviously at this low level, we do not have any of our bread and butter abilities that is going to help us clear this content extremely fast. We don't have wind fury totem. We don't have cleave. We don't have whirlwind. We don't have sweeping strikes. We don't have any of these abilities. Um, this group will really, really start to shine at level 30 and then even more so at level 40 when we get even more of those really hard hitting abilities. Uh, so this is more of a later stage uh, leveling group that's going to kind of ramp up over time. But that being said, 20k an hour at this level is actually insane. Obviously, if you are an AoE group, you could get a little bit more, um, but you also have a lot more dangers within an AoE group of dying. So we believe this is going to be the strongest group possible. Um, we just believe that with Mark of the Wild, Thorns, uh, four different taunts, we're really going to be able to, you know, keep mobs off of, you know, someone who's dying. Uh, I can always pop out and throw out some heals. So overall, this group is really, really strong. So I believe the best dungeon comps are four mages, one priest, or one druid, three warriors, one shaman. Obviously, alliance side, that would be one druid, three warriors, one paladin. Hunters, I believe you are always better with a sh solo questing route. Hunters in a dungeon is not is not really that strong, and you're going to have to worry about things like ammunition and you know uh, taming new pets and things like that. So that being said, I think hunters are much better out in the world. Rogues can take the place of a warrior slot. Warlocks can take a place of a mage slot. However, I do think warriors, or excuse me, I do think rogues will s slightly slow down a group, and I do believe warlocks will slightly slow down a group. But that being said, uh, one warlock, three mages, one priest can be good. Uh, throwing in a rogue for one of your warriors is also fine. Now let's talk about why I believe melee cleave has a better overall leveling experience, but that spell cleave probably will be a little bit faster up until 40. Okay, so spell cleave is going to be by far the more challenging group to run with. Uh, it's a little more nuanced. You need to know really good pulls. Uh, you need to have mages that are competent in knowing how to rotate their novas, rotating their CC um, in terms of um, their novas, blizzards, you know, things like that, depending on if you're going to go massive AoE pulls with blizzard, whether you're going to be arcane explosioning um, and pulling that way. Uh, it really, really just depends. Um, if you look back on my videos, I had a group where I ran with mages that were all specced into arcane. We literally just ran in and just AoE'd everything with arcane explosion, and I just spammed out heals. The, the problem with the mage groups and the AoE groups is you're going to have more downtime between your mob packs. You are killing many more mobs, obviously, at once, but then you are having to wait to sit down and drink and get ready for the next pull. Melee Cleave, especially with our setup where you have a Druid and a Shaman, you can basically pull forever. Um, as you can see in our runs, if our Shaman starts to get low, uh, he'll sit down and drink and will continue to keep pulling. If I need to, um, if I'm getting low, I can have a Warrior taunt off of me. I can pop out and heal myself up, heal the Warrior up. Um, we basically can just keep on going forever and ever. Having two healers, in a dungeon is very nice for that exact reason. Also having uh, three warriors that all have taunt as well, we can and you kind of juggle uh, threat and aggro off of each other. So that's why I think uh, melee cleave will have a little bit better time overall um, because there's less downtime and obviously your abilities ramp up nicely with you as you level. Um, you'll be decked out in dungeon blues and you'll have a shaman putting down wind fury totem and you'll just be cleaving you know, every single mob around you. It's going to be extremely fast. Now, we actually tested this leveling on one of the very last days of beta. 
So we were cutting it close um, just in terms of our schedules, uh, you know, lining up and where we could all be on and test this. Uh, so I don't have a huge amount of testing experience. Uh, our plan is at the next stress test. Uh, I know this one was postponed, but hopefully there's another stress test before launch and we will be practicing our route at that point and getting as far through the content as we can. Um, but that being said, I took extensive notes, guys. I have, you know, XP per mob um, at different levels. I have av average health of all the mobs. Um, I have health of individual mobs. I have, you know, tons and tons of information, but I'm not going to bore you with all of the nitty gritty. One thing I will say and point out right now is I'm going to talk about some of the fastest speed levelers within the beta. I'm not going to talk about, you know, private server speed levelers or, um, you know, people that uh, have done speed leveling in the past. I'm going to talk just about the beta because that's kind of where we're getting all our numbers from. Cathon Luck, who is a horde hunter. Um, I know a lot of you probably know about him through his speed running on the beta. He has the fastest um, horde hunter time from, from 1 to 40. And he hit, um, he went from levels 12 to 16 in two hours and five minutes. So Jokerd, who's also a well-known mage on Alliance side, who had a blisteringly fast um, 1 to 60 time on a private server here recently, he was also doing testing on the beta, and he hit from 12 to 16 in two hours. Amphi, who's an Alliance hunter, who probably many of you know also for their very, very fast leveling time, went from 12 to 16 in two hours as well. And then Joanna, who obviously a lot of you know about, or Jonah, however you want to say it, he went from 12 to 16 in three hours and 10 minutes. So with our runs from 12 to 16, we did it in two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, I hope you guys realize how fast that really is for five people in a dungeon, especially warriors who are not known for being fast levelers and shamans who are also not very fast levelers to be able to take a group of five people into a dungeon where you control the environment. You have to understand that these speed levelers were doing it on servers on the beta that were either they were going on the PVE server or they were playing quite late in the beta when basically the zones were dead. So they were pretty much in a, they were pretty much uninterrupted. Now, obviously they're going to be fast levelers anyway, so they probably will be out, out in front of the pack and not have competition, but leveling within a dungeon guarantees you a safe environment. You know exactly what to expect. So us being able to do 12, to 16 in two hours and 30 minutes is extremely fast and shows you just how fast dungeon leveling can be. And you have to understand, like I said, with this uh, melee cleave group, we don't have like any <laughs> gear pretty much. We're just in some random greens that have been dropping. Um, we don't have most of our abilities um, that are going to really speed up the leveling process. Um, and so this, this, uh, speed that we are carrying now is only going to get faster as we continue through the leveling, leveling process. So I hope that those statistics and kind of um, those leveling times show you just how strong this leveling route can actually be. So we've covered uh, leveling speed from 12 to 16 with some of the testing we've done. Uh, we've covered group composition and what groups I believe will be strong. Um, now let's talk about the pros and cons of dungeon leveling because while there are a lot of pros to dungeon leveling There are cons as well. So let's get right into them So let's get the pros out of the way first. So pros for dungeon leveling is you get to hang out with four other people uh, You know sitting in discord with four people and playing a game can be a lot more uh, Enjoyable for some people obviously this is not always a pro for other other people enjoy going out in the world and kind of questing and things But for the most part people enjoy hanging out with you know friends So leveling with four people can be kind of more of a social experience uh, Another pro or con depending on how you look at it is that a lot of people really enjoy dungeon leveling So it's just because it's more social uh, you have more of a challenge here and there uh, and so, yeah, a lot of people enjoy dungeon leveling. 
It's very, very fast. With tests that I've done and several other people within the community has done, uh, leveling in dungeons is extremely fast with an optimal group and with an optimal route. You're able to gear up while leveling, so once you hit level 60, uh, you have actually most of your Priebus already equipped. You don't have to worry about leveling route, contested areas, dealing with too many people um, who are doing the same quest as you. You're in a controlled environment. The same spawns are going to be there every single time, and there's no unexpected outcomes. It's basically a perfect simulation. You know, you know exactly what you're going to get each time you step inside a dungeon. Okay, so now that we've covered the pros, let's talk about the cons. So the cons is you're hitting level 60 with very low reputation for cities. Now, this doesn't matter a whole lot because you can always go back and do the quests, but they will give you less rep than they would than you would get if you were doing them at that level. And also, it's just it's nice to have the the higher rep because you get cheaper uh, vendor prices on things um, from that from that faction so for example if you're going to buy your your uh, kodo as a druid as a horde druid um, you're going to have that uh, cut from being honored with thunder bluff where you probably won't have this um, with dungeon level so another con is that running the same dungeon over and over again can be very boring you'll have stretches where you're leveling for uh, three to five levels in the same dungeon and that can get boring for some people other people enjoy that um, but again this is a con for many um, you will have to go back and do certain quest chains to get items certain reputations and certain attunements done um, this is not a huge deal but obviously if you choose to level in dungeons you will have to go back and do some specific quests here and there uh, it can be slow if you're not in an optimal group or you're with people that you've never really played with before. So that is something that you have to be careful of. Uh, if you want to play with the same people, then you have to rely on the same schedules. So if someone's wanting to sleep, then the whole group suffers. So that is one thing about dungeon running is you, your whole team or your whole group that you have um, set up for dungeon leveling needs to be on the same page. Uh, one of the biggest cons, and I think this is one thing that you'll see a lot in comment sections with uh, these dungeon uh, XP videos and also just um, a common feeling that a lot of people in the community had when everyone was doing Scarlet Monastery uh, on the beta, is that you're missing out completely on the world of Warcraft. So you're missing out on the PvP, the different zones, the different encounters you have to get up or uh, get into, and you know all the different quests and you know things that you're picking up on the way. So for example, from level 30 to 40, many people just chain ran Scarlet Monastery. That means that you weren't out in STV having to deal with you know people ganking you. Um, you weren't really in the world and you didn't have the danger that is with World of Warcraft. Um, so those are the cons and those are the pros. So one question that probably is on your mind is questing and questing within dungeons. Uh, should you pick up quests in dungeons and you know how far should you go with these uh, quests? Do you gather up every single quest, blah, 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 etc.? cetera? Um, no, for example, with this, run we only do the quests that are very easy to turn in you're going to have to go to thunder bluff to turn in um, a portion of the quest for wailing caverns and also um, for me as a druid i go there anyways for training so the quests that this dungeon provides that are turned in at thunder bluff is very easy to do obviously the quest where you turn in right in orgamar is also easy to do the undercity quest for example is one that we will skip um, and this kind of goes for everything if it's Outside of the way, if it's kind of further away, if it's going to be, you know, take you longer than, you know, 10 minutes to turn in the quest, it's not going to be worth it. You could have just um, ran the dungeon partially again and, you know, received much more XP. Quests in general don't give that much XP. It's more the fact that you're, you're either getting a reward from the quest or it's just an easy turn in and it's close by. So that's kind of the way I would go for dungeon quests. You definitely don't need to do them all. Um, and if they're out of the way or they don't reward anything uh, worthwhile, then I just skip them.
All right, guys, I think that covers most of the important questions and, uh, you know, things to cover on dungeon leveling. I think dungeon leveling is a great tool for Classic WoW and for leveling um, quickly and efficiently with the group. That being said, there's a lot of strategy and um, planning and coordination that goes into leveling from 1 to 60 with a group of individuals. Uh, if you do plan on going this route, make sure you you really know the people that you're playing with. Uh, even if it means, you know, jumping on some other servers or, you know, playing some other games with them just to kind of, you know, get a feel for them and, you know, chat with them on Discord and things like that to kind of build up more of a relationship before you go into a dungeon. Uh, you know, or I mean, not even a dungeon, but before you go into, you know, leveling with them for several hours over several days. Um, that being said, guys, I was going to level solely with, uh, solely by myself via like a quest route, like most people were going to, uh, even though I knew dungeon leveling was fast. I was just saying, I don't want to have to deal with that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I kind of found out that some people from my guild were going to be leveling together. And I think a lot of people in my guild now are going to be trying to find leveling groups because it's just so good. Um, so if you can get a leveling group, definitely do it. However, like I said, make sure your guys' schedules align, your goals align, and you know the amount of time that you're going to play kind of falls in, into uh, the same kind of uh, relative category. You don't want to be playing with someone who you know plans to play two or three hours a day when you plan on no life in classic at the beginning. So make sure you find the right people if you're going to dungeon group. Um, composition obviously matters, so make sure you kind of build a group, um, whether it's spell cleave or melee cleave, and you kind of try and um, put that into perspective. That being said, guys, hope this video was informative. I know it was very long. Um, it was longer than most of my other videos, so if you made it this far, <laughs> shout out to you, and uh, I hope to see you guys in classic. Um, August is coming, coming soon. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. As always, thank you to my Patreon supporters and welcome Chebby or Chibi, our newest Patreon.